Morning, everyone. Thanks for that, Bill. <laughs> Um, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land that we gathered on today, the Noongar people. Um, and I'd also like to um, acknowledge my co-authors on this presentation who um, did, you know, most of what I'm about to talk about today, or all of what I'm about to talk about today. Um, so I wanted to just share a little bit about um, the different cat management approaches that we take on different properties that AWC manages within the Southwest region. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just talk through what we do on each of our four properties in the Southwest. So Australian Wildlife Conservancy is a not-for-profit conservation organization, um, which works across the whole of Australia um, and focused on the effective conservation of Australian wildlife um, and the habitats in which Australian fauna live. Um, AWC has a conservation science program um, in which we collect and analyze ecological data on the AWC properties in our portfolio. Um, we are very focused on monitoring the populations of um, fauna that we manage, um, looking at the impact of the management actions that we take and trying to um, adopt an adaptive management approach across all of our properties. Uh, we work to develop and implement conservation strategies and work closely with land managers um, to manage threats. Uh, threat management is a very large part of the conservation science program at AWC, um, and the threats that we're managing on our properties include feral animals, weeds, climate change, and fire. I work in the Southwest region, um, which includes four properties, so 4A Island in Shark Bay, uh, Mount Gibson in the Eastern Wheat Belt, and the two properties in the Perth Hills, Peruna and Krakamaya. Feral cat management in the Southwest region involves uh, feral predator-free fenced exclosures, um, also an aerial and ground-based erratic cat baiting program at one of, at one of our properties, uh, targeted cat trapping, and an extensive camera trap monitoring program. On Foray Island, cats were eradicated in 2001. Uh, thanks, Dave. And um, we have we monitor for cat incursions every year or two using a track plot survey uh, that no cats have been detected on the island um, since they were eradicated, and four mammals, four Australian native mammal species, have been successfully reintroduced since then: uh, banded hare, wallabies, shark bay bandicoots, shark bay mice, and uh, booties, burrowing betongs. The island supports um, good stable populations of all of these species at high occupancy rates. For most of them, shark bay mice might be a little bit less detectable than some of the other ones, um, but a healthy population of shark bay mice on the island and an extremely large population of booties, um, which has been stable on the island now for a number of years. At Krakamaya, which was the first sanctuary that AWC bought, um, it's a small roughly 300 or just under 300 hectare property, which is fully fenced in the Perth Hills. Um, cats were eradicated there in 1994, and there have been no feral cat incursions since then either. Um, it's, the fence is checked at least three times a week uh, for any damage, um, and any damage that is detected is, is fixed immediately. Um, and there's a, an array of cameras around the fence which is used to detect feral predators patrolling the outside of the fence. Uh, several reintroduced mammals have been introduced into the area, including four which have um, established, successfully established um, fairly significant populations, numbering several hundreds of individuals of common brush-tailed possums, Tamar wallabies, uh, southern brown bandicoots, and woilies. Uh, these populations are stable um, around those couple of hundred individuals. Um, at Mount Gibson, which is the largest sanctuary in the region, uh, we have an 8,000 hectare fenced exclosure on the property um, from which cats were eradicated in 2015. Um, and we are currently engaged in a large mammal reintroduction program at Mount Gibson within the fenced safe haven um, in which eight mammal species have been successfully reintroduced so far. Um, all of those species have shown increases in um, site abundance, occupancy, and or population size since, reintroduce, since being reintroduced, and some of those increases are quite large. For example, the graph there for woilies um, shows that woilies have increased from a couple of hundred individuals shortly after reintroduction to a few thousand individuals uh, last year, um, and are now being used to um, supply woilies to start other populations elsewhere. 
Uh, the exclosure is, also, again, um, checked. The fence around the exclosure is checked very regularly, and any damage to the exclosure is immediately repaired. Um, there have been no field cat incursions into the exclosure to date. Mount Gibson is a much larger property than just the exclosure. So the exclosure is shown on this map in the white area. Um, but there's another 100,000 plus hectares of property, um, which we also manage for conservation purposes. Uh, cats are present on the larger sanctuary, and we have a permanently deployed camera array of about 120 cameras um, out on the sanctuary, which we use to monitor feral predator activity, including both cats and foxes. Um, and we detect cats at roughly five detections per day um, across all of those cameras. So it's a relatively low detection, but we do detect cats frequently and everywhere. Uh, there, we've reintroduced one mammal species, common brush-tailed possums, intentionally outside the fence so far and have plans to reintroduce more mammal species outside of the fence onto the larger sanctuary over time. Um, also, some mammals have taken that in the, into their own hands and have started releasing themselves over the fence. So we do have detections of several um, native mammal species outside the fence as well. We implement an eradicat aerial baiting program across the hatched area on the map. Uh, and use the camera array to identify cat activity hotspots in which uh, targeted trapping takes place. I'll just, this is just some results from the camera array. So you can see from the left-hand image for cat, that's cat detections in July to September last year. Um, and it shows that where the array is located, you can see very clearly where our cameras are because ca every camera is picking up a cat. Um, but compared to the woolly detections on the right-hand side, um, you get fewer spots where we're picking up woolies, but sometimes you get more detections of woolies than you get of cats. I'm just going to skip this because I don't have time, but someone in the um, question time can ask me about whether Eradicate Baiting Program is uh, effective. <laughs> <laughs> Um, our, our finally, Peruna is another sanctuary that we manage in the uh, own and manage in the Perth Hills. It's not fenced. Um, cats are present on the property. Um, they're present at a rate of about 8% um, occup naive occupancy. Uh, we have a two, uh, two threatened mammal populations on the property, a very small population of black flanked rock wallaby, um, and we also have western quolls that occur there naturally, but in very low densities and quite low occupancy. Uh, we use a camera array to um, keep track of uh, how many cats are present, and we also have a um, trap network of 75 traps around the whole sanctuary, which are checked every day during winter, um, and four cats were trapped and euthanized last year. Uh, trapping and shooting occurs in cat hotspots identified on the uh, camera trap array as well. Um, so feral predator management in our sanctuaries, uh, we've, we demonstrate that there is fast recovery of native wildlife when cats are completely removed from an area by isolation, either uh, fencing or the ocean. Um, but we do need different approaches for different places. Um, and we need to ma maintain an adaptive and responsive approach. We cannot let up on monitoring and uh, response. We do need to be practical about what can be achieved outside of fenced exclosures, and uh, we're starting to think now about uh, whether there are tolerable thresholds of cat activity at which populations of native mammals can persist in some of these landscapes. Um, if we're going to go down the route of you know, reintroducing species like Mount Gibson, for example, outside the fence, what are those densities that we would consider acceptable that can be maintained in the presence of a couple of cats? So those are things I'd love to discuss with anyone else with common interests um, throughout the rest of the day. Um, and yeah, otherwise happy to take questions at the end. Thank you.